good day good morning el paso welcome to the channel your local junk caller here charlie aka dumpster daddy um in here in the lab in the studio this morning uh it is sunday april 14th um i have been working on some invoices been sending out some things to uh, some clients as a matter of fact i'm working on one right now while i'm thinking about it let me get that all taken care of but yeah so we are in here and so while i was working on that i was actually listening to some some uh youtube videos from some other content creators out there and i came across chris from clutter reduction and he's doing a solo fridge removal and because he does a lot of his job solo and so do i um, i have gained a lot of knowledge from this gentleman when it comes to removing um, certain items uh, like mattresses and this one i believe he's going to get into uh, how to remove a refrigerator from a, a an apartment building um, i do believe he get he gets into it you know what i'm gonna let him tell the story uh, let me get on over here show you the screen bing bam boom and let's go ahead and get chris started inside that has been there for more than two months i don't know yeah, if that's with no power it. or just in well, we just pulled up to our first stop of the day which is a fridge removal we're going to be doing it solo it's on the fourth floor with an elevator i have been here before the tricky and like i said the reason i like listening to chris is because he um he knows what he's talking about when it comes to using leverage and moving things without having a a, a partner so uh he used to work for i believe he said a, a furniture moving company or just a moving company in general but uh here we go yeah. key part is mainly going to be the doors because every door has an additional screen slash glass door on the outside which means that the trim is going to be a little bit less now it's going to make it a little bit tighter of a fit if it is anything more than a really basic standard refrigerator and i can't really pop the doors off it because there's food left inside that has been there for more than two months I don't know if that's with no power or just in general. So it's either going to be maggots and mold or just not smell super great. Either way, I don't plan to open the doors if I don't have to. Now, I made a video a while back about how to remove a refrigerator solo, which I'll have somewhere up here. But I'm going to be doing one of two things. Either A, I'm going to strap the hand truck to the refrigerator with a ratchet strap, which is going to give me a lot of control with pulling it back by myself, setting it down gently by myself, and making tight. And um, that's a technique that I didn't know about until just watching this this video right here. Um, I didn't know about adding a rat or putting a ratchet strap over a refrigerator and using it to um, get onto your your four wheel dolly. Like new information to me. It turns and swiveling with it without having to worry about it tipping off. Or the second thing will be to run a ratchet strap around the refrigerator itself to create a handle halfway up and then tip it backwards, stick the four-wheeler underneath it, pull it back towards me, and then roll it out that way, which gives me a lot more maneuverability around tight spaces, turns, and getting into the elevator. And it's not gonna defeat the purpose of the height because it's not gonna be that tall of a piece regardless. So we'll see what happens. It really depends on if it's a really basic fridge, like freezer on top, fridge on the bottom, or if it's more like the more standard doors nowadays, which is a double fridge door top, freezer pull out on the bottom. The difference is usually two to four inches in width and two to four inches in depth, which can make a big difference when you're going through a door that's not quite 34 inches. So right. we'll see what happens. And then after that, we're gonna be picking up a king size bed on the first floor. So we're just gonna mattress bars it the whole way and that should be pretty easy. Yeah, he was the first person that I heard of when it comes to removing mattresses. I, I found out um, in this business, not, not all mattresses are made the same. There are some mattresses that are very cheap and springy. They don't have no padding, no cushion in them. Um, there are those memory foam mattresses. Those are from the devil. And, and then there's, you know, those people like myself who likes, you know, a, a nice, firm, thick mattress with a pillow top on it. Um, and those mattresses are very, very, very heavy. You know, if you get you a king size mattress and a good queen size mattress, like so uh, when it came to removing mattresses, I didn't know anything about these mattress bars until watching this gentleman um, talk about that. Um, I did go out and, and buy the ones that he suggested and they were too heavy and, and or, or too robust 
for my uh, four wheel dolly that I had at the time when I got from uh, Home Depot. So I have ordered a more heavy duty one. Uh, I think one that more resembles the one that he has. And uh, we're going to see how that how that thing uh, move and shake. But let's get back into Chris. Well, I'm going to head up there right now, measure everything first. I don't have to bring up a bunch of equipment I don't need. And then we'll go ahead and get this thing taken care of. All right, so good news. The power's been off for four months, but they turned it back on for two months. So I told them my concern with it is if it's been sitting there long enough and there's any liquids in it, they're going to build. Just going to skip ahead a little bit, get to where he uh, gets to moving the, the piece. Um, so your water line is connected. So for liability reasons, I need you to unscrew it. And there we go again. That's something I didn't know either uh, about having if the water line to a refrigerator is hooked up um, to go and have the client remove it instead of me doing it. Now, most of the refrigerators and I would say most of them, all of the refrigerators that I have removed from people's homes or properties have already been unhooked and discarded, put in the, the, the backyard and or just sitting around in the garage. So I haven't really had to unhook a water line from a, a, a refrigerator, but that's good to know. Something that I will keep in mind next time if uh, I ever come across something like that. So as I mentioned before, what I'm going to be doing is using a four-wheeler versus a hand truck for maneuverability purposes. That piece of cardboard I just grabbed, what I'm going to do with it is stick it on the back side of the refrigerator. And the reason being is I want to wedge it up and shove it underneath just the back side because there's either metal pieces or there's hard plastic wheels. Either way, I want the back end to sit on that when I tip the refrigerator back so that way it doesn't cause any pressure and potentially crack the tile. Once again, that's another good useful piece of information there uh, coming from this gentleman. Something else I didn't know. So when going into this situation, if I ever encounter it, uh, now I have this in the back of my mind to help uh, take care of this, a job similar to this. Not likely that it'll happen, but it's more of a safety measure that doesn't take much time. So what I'm doing here is I'm holding on to the strap of one hand tipping the fridge back at any given moment, I can yank that thing back towards me. So I'm gonna shove the four there underneath. I'm gonna meet it to the fridge so it's flush. This way I can place it exactly where I need to. And I don't have to worry about it slipping off. Now I'm gonna pull down and pull with the handle back up. Super easy. And then you just adjust it with your foot. Try to get it as far in the middle as you can. Made that look too easy right there. Um... Like I said, I feel more equipped now because I do have a dolly coming that is more similar to that one. Uh, I had to order it off Amazon. It was a little pricey, but for um, having the equipment and, and the the now the know-how to go into a situation like this, I feel more equipped and, and better given the knowledge that I have gained from my own experience to go into a situation and make sure that we can handle jobs for our clients more efficiently and effectively. Go ahead and wiggle it around and make sure that it's not going to tip, make sure it's balanced. And that's honestly all it is to it. It's super easy. Now I can squeeze it through any kind of corner or hallway that I needed to. And just like that, it makes it very doable to do it solo. And there it is, folks. That's what I wanted to get into when it came to uh, talking about um, how to remove a refrigerator by yourself from an apartment complex. I do believe he said he was in a, a four story apartment complex. Um, the elevator was working for him. So that's a blessing for him. Um, but I know now that when when we do have some apartment complexes that do call us out to remove things. But like I said, they haven't asked us to remove any refrigerators or anything from any condos or apartments. Uh, most of the time, those are coming from uh, homes, residential homes. Um, they're already in the backyard discarded or they're already in the garage ready to go. 
But uh, have, being armed with this information and, and the tools, it just makes it much easier when you go into a client's house and uh, you're by yourself and they may have some reservations. They may say, oh, man, you know, you, you might need some more muscle. You might need some help. But when you go in and you're confident with the tools you have, the knowledge you've gained, and then you can go in there and make it move and shake the way only you as the business owner or the person doing this for, for their client can move and shake for them. And, it, you know, that four wheel dolly has helped me a lot. I just broke my 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 original one when I was doing a removal for this embroidery company and I had to take down the, the this metal um, like I think it was like a 10, 15 head metal um, sewing machine. Um, and I was was moving it out and then I was moving it at the door and didn't pay attention and had the metal thing come down. And once it hit the lip of the door or, and the curb or whatever, it fell down and cracked it. So now I have another one. I did have to go to Home Depot to get another one of another one of those uh, like lighter ones that I have been that I just broke. Um, because I did a job where I had to move some furniture, make moving that heavy furniture so easy, man. So if you are in this business and you are doing this by yourself, you, ha you have to learn how to use leverage and you have to learn how to use the tools around you to get the job done, man. But that's all I wanted to get into. I'm out of here. See y'all next time.